Today, I am embarking on a terrifying project, and that is, I want to make myself, for an upcoming photo shoot, one of those cottage core um, bodices out of that gobelin fabric. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but you know what I mean. Grandma's couch fabric, which I happen to have a bunch of, and I'll get it down from my fabric stash shortly. But yeah, I am not great at sewing, so this is going to be an adventure. And in case you were wondering, yes, I'm looking weirdly dressed up for a sewing video because I just finished filming a different video and I'm just like, I got the camera, I'm gonna film an intro. But you know what? Pajama Rolly is a lot more appropriate for this kind of video, so uh, let's go. Pajama Rolly here, feeling a lot more comfortable. So, I am going to get down my fabric, get out my pattern, and screen, probably. Screen is probably the next step. But speaking of patterns, let me show you what I've got. I have this simplicity pattern. I will read you the number as soon as I finish showing you what it is because making the camera focus on the thing that's not my face is kind of hard. So this is Simplicity's 3809. And yeah, already had this one in my stash. I like that it looks kind of simple. Not sure if I'm gonna change it. I'm definitely, well, not definitely. Most likely I'm gonna have to upsize this because I think I am beyond their normal sizing, but well, who knows. Gonna get it out. I'm probably gonna get out like some corsets I already own so I can just sort of do a comparison and yeah, see, see if I can get a mock-up done in a relatively timely manner because the shoot I want this for is in like three weeks, I think, and um, I'm not that good or that fast at sewing. But yeah, I, just tossed that pattern away in case you heard that landing, I am going to go to my fabric stash, which is over there. Welcome to this corner of my room. That's my little leader wardrobe, and uh, above it is my fabric stash, so I'm gonna uh, do a rummage, if I can, because I've got stuff on the floor over here. Pastorolli did a smart. This bag has all of my Goblin fabrics in it. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, put this down and take a little look, see what we got. First of all, we've got this stuff, which is blue on the backside. But yeah, beautiful, not my favorite though. It's a bit more like modern, something like that. Not quite sure if modern's the right word, but yeah, not my favorite, but we do have plenty of that. And I just dropped it on the floor. That was that funky hard. Then I have like this tiny weenie <laughs> square, which maybe I'll make like a, oh, you know what I should do? I should make a rectangle headdress out of that. Okay, I'm actually gonna stash this one. I have a box up here out of shot. That's my uh, work in progress box. It's very full and I'm gonna put that in there because yes, a rectangle headdress out of that would be super cute. Same style of fabric, but obviously not the right kind of pattern. Goes in the no pile. Oh yeah, come here my beauty. Oh yes. Okay, oh, the light. Oh, whoops, that's the backside anyway. <laughs> yeah. Ta da! That is perfect. And I've got like, what, two meters? That would be our fire alarm, smoke alarm. Not sure why that's going off, but uh, I'll be back. The house is not on fire. Our smoke alarm is just busted, and uh, James just found that out the fun way. Uh, okay, what else? What else have we got? All right, are you the last one? Yes, you're the last one. Okay, and last I have this one. Not as pretty because it's just plain brown, sort of paisleyish pattern, but I have plenty of it. So, if in doubt, I can use this. All right, I will see you once I start figuring out pattern stuff.
sorry, I'm here extending the pattern. I realized I can extend it at the waistline, so I, that's the waistline. So I've been copying that from one piece to the other because I didn't mark it originally. But I discovered the side back and the back don't actually line up properly because like I've laid them over each other at the marking point. And as you can not really see, but basically this bit here, you can sort of see through there is like an inch too long. Even when you take into account you know how it'll be rotated it's too long and same down here so uh i'm not quite sure what i'm gonna do okay i've cut out the pattern pieces ready to pin on my mock-up and do the extending but this shows more clearly what i was trying to say about the side back and the back so like that lines up and then here under this jar ta -da! wow okay you can't really see that anyway <laughs> i thought this would be clearer but it's not but yeah, you can see the massive side dif size difference. So I'm gonna trace the front, front back and side front onto my mock-up fabric and then figure out what the hell to do with the back, side back. I've come to the part of sewing called sadness and maths. Because <laughs> this pattern's too small for me. So I gotta f just figure out, I've got my own measurements. And then I gotta figure out how much bigger I need to make it. Uh -huh. It'll be doable, it's just a little like. math. Uh, plus 8 is 30. Six. 36, thank you, I love you, thank you for being within uh, math distance. I mean, I was hoping you'd do 28 and 28 so we could have 56. <laughs> 56? 56. That's all I could think of. Uh. Well, we're on to 36? Yes. Plus 14. Uh, 50. Really? Yes. Huh. No, you're right, I made it up. Okay, hang on. 36 plus 14 is indeed 50, I hope you're not filming. <laughs> I am filming! <laughs> oh, and, 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 what was that instead of filming that you said? What? Oh, boy. <laughs> I pronounced it properly. The internet will decide. I love you, but okay. I love you too. And yes, it really is 50. Oh, I, that, I measured that bit wrong. Um, uh, so we'll go back to 36. Mm -hmm. And add like 8. Oh, I don't know if those numbers go together, but it's 44. 44, okay, which means I need to make the whole thing 6 inches bigger. Which means, if basically, if I add an inch to each pattern piece, that will give me more inches than that. Alright, the maths have worked out. Back to the table where I can actually draw things. Many, many minutes later. I just realised if I want to add width, I can't just stick it on the top. Because effectively, what I want to do with this is add two inches to it in general. piece was eight inches like the whole pattern was eight inches too small for me if I add two inches to this this will be cut twice so that'll be four inches and there'll be four inches on the side back etc but you know what let's just yes let's just make it big because we can always then make it small afterwards so I'd rather have the mock-up be too big and then have to size down. My main camera crapped out on me while I was filming, it ran out of card space and it's way too late in the evening and I've got a cold and I need to work tomorrow so basically I don't care enough to film properly. But yeah, I've successfully traced the side front panel. I don't know what I'm doing, I don't, it looks like it's too big, it looks like it's the wrong shape but 
whatever. I'm just going to keep doing panels in the mock-up fabric and we'll see where we go because I can always make it smaller. And um, yeah, so I will next update you when I actually have a mock-up sewn together. Or when I'm sewing it. Whatever I feel like. Okay, like, video quality is absolutely terrible. I'm filming on my phone at night in selfie mode, so terrible, but I just whipped together my mock-up and forgive how awful I'm going to look, but it actually is mostly okay. I mean, it looks terrible to you guys, but effectively I need to take it in around, like, the armpits, but other than that, it's surprisingly okay. So I keep forgetting to film any updates whatsoever. Last night I cut out all the pieces, so I finished marking out my mock-up, cut my mock-up back up, cut out my fabric, and as you can see I have sewn it together. So this bit here is the back, side back, side front, front, and this is my primary fabric. I actually really love it now it's all cut out, and let me show you the best thing. That is going to be the lining. This thing is going to be fully reversible, and I am so happy. Now, um, my sewing area is not really all that aesthetic, so I'm not really probably going to sew much until I've got this ready for try on. And by so much, I mean show much. Not going to show you much of the sewing. Welcome back to my floor and my voice. So, I have encountered a bit of a conundrum. It might be hard to see for you guys because this is upside down, but so to make this fit me, I had to make the princess seam along the bodice. Actually, hang on, let me just flip this around. Here you go. Now you can view the other side. So this is this is the front. So this is the this is the center front. And this is the shoulder strap. Now basically that really illustrated my problem quite well. Because of how I had to deepen this princess seam, the strap now goes bloop, off to the side instead of straight. So I gotta figure out how to fix that. So like whether I put a dot in it somewhere. Like I'm really not sure. That's bumming me out a bit or whether I like undo this section of the princess seam and deal with just having some, some gaping, I'm gonna have to have a bit of a think. Hi, guess what? It's my floor again. So I loosened the princess seam from here to here. It's still, I'm not sure if you can see. See, I've got two layers because I did it here and then I realized it needed to be more fitted, so I did it there. But up here I, um, unpicked the further line and just did one and so you can see that this has made the front straps sit a lot straighter still not straight though but I'm kind of thinking about sort of cheating it so like and I want them narrower too so if I fold that bit over and then just cut there I think it'll be better so uh wish me luck so yes I owe you guys a little bit of an explanation because my last bits that I filmed on this project were a little scrappy. Basically, after I sewed everything together and adjusted the fit, um, like I discussed, I did end up um, narrowing down the straps and everything. I realized two things. One, I was not going to be able to make this reversible because I'd made so many little tweaks on my body, mimicking that in the sort of underside, the lining, it was going to be pretty damn impossible. So I didn't, which meant that I could just, you know, overlock all the inside um, seams, which was good because this fabric started to fray a lot. And then I was like, okay, cool, fine, let's, second last thing to do before finishing the eyelets is um, putting bias tape around the edges. I was about one meter short. <laughs> At about five meters needed about six. Fortunately though, I turned out to have just enough I think I had about 20 centimeters left when I was done. Just enough of this brown braided trim to go around the edges. And so I just winged it, sewed it on with the exact stitch and called it a day. Honestly, I, I think it looks pretty cool. Like, I, I think it's not bad. But yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, all I got left to do is the eyelids and it's a lot, it's a lot scrappier than I wanted it to be. I did want it to be like a nice project and it's kind of not, but oh well.
Now, I was making this for a cottage course shoot I was going to do while James and I went to Goulburn. Travel vlog up there. But uh, if you haven't seen the travel vlog, long story short is we were really sick leading up to it, up to our little getaway, and we had planned to do a bunch of photo shoots. We were planning on doing a photo shoot with an old friend, a photo shoot of me, and a photo shoot of James. Well, the only one that ended up happening was the photo shoot with our friend, because I was sort of being panicky about having to finish these eyelets while I was on the trip, and then James is like, you're stressing. Why stress? There's other times and places we can shoot. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Fuck this. And then we ended up basically doing the same thing with his shoot as well. It's like, yeah, we could do it or we could not. And we chose not to. So anyway, <laughs> this was meant to be therefore finished a couple of weeks ago for that shoot. It isn't finished and I haven't done the shoot, but I still like how it's coming along. Like it's, it's definitely not perfect, but it's pretty cool and I've never made anything like this. So I am going to sew some eyelets now. Um, what I'm going to do for that is I don't have an awl or anything like you meant to have, so I just have a fancy purple sharpie, a pair of scissors, and some embroidery thread. I watched a tutorial, I'll link it in the description, on how to meant to do eyelets, and yeah, it's like, you know, use an awl so you're not actually cutting into the fibers, and I'm like, eh. But I'm glad I looked it up, because I kind of thought you had to do eyelets uh, like buttonholes. And honestly, I hate sewing buttonholes. Alright, I just paused because I'm like, I realized I probably ought to do this slightly more properly. I'm gonna get my measuring tape. turn the camera off. I do want to get some like artistic photos of me, not photos, video of me hand sewing my eyelets, so I'll do that. Um, <laughs> and then I will next after that see you in the reveal. <laughs> I actually get to do a reveal, I'm actually kind of excited. <laughs> time and to be honest well I'll just be honest I'm not too happy with this it ended up being far too big in every dimension and it just doesn't make me feel good to wear it like on the one hand I'm super happy with myself I mean I made a bodice I made a fitted bodice and other than the fact that it's too freaking large it actually fits fairly well. Like, I sized up the pattern well. It's pretty good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with the sort of fit over the bust and all of that. And honestly, I, I tried a heck of a lot of new things. I've never edged something with, like, braided trim like I did on this. I mean, didn't necessarily do the best job, but not doing the best job is still a step up from I've literally never done it before. Same with the eyelets. They're, they're pretty darn messy, but I sewed a bunch of eyelets, like, it's a weird position to be in because on the one hand I'm proud of myself, but I'm not proud of the final outcome, and I'm kind of bummed. <laughs> well, of course I'm bummed. You know, it, it's pretty natural. You put time and effort into something and it doesn't work out. That's a bit disappointing, sort of, no matter what. But I am pleased that I tried. I'm also kind of pleased that it didn't work out in time for the shoot at Goulburn travel vlog where the shoot was meant to happen up there because um <laughs> that would have been really disappointing to put all the rest of the prep into the shoot and then not have the bodice work out but yeah you sew you learn 
you move on. I'm keen to try this kind of project again. I hope you still enjoyed watching this sewing vlog. I don't do too many of them, but I hope it was fun. And yeah, I think that's about all there is to say. Hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, bye-bye!